we had the premiere in Rome last week and we had two screening room of around four to 500 people and we had a 10 minute standing ovation and he Wow. wasn't Lads, I, as a kid, used to put a Superman cape around my neck and, well, it, it was a blue towel and jump from uh, chair to chair. So when I told my mom I was doing this, she kind of remember, reminded me, did you get a lot of stories like that when people knew that you were making something like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually um, did put on a fancy dress Superman costume last Christmas. And um, and my daughter, who is old enough to know better, sneakily took a picture of me and sent it to this guy, who then turned it into a cardboard cutout that sits proudly in our office. Um, so, so, So so it doesn't. yes. You don't have to be a child to still wear <laughs> Superman costume. it, it's the child within. That's what appeals to, uh, to us. Yeah. <laughs> this has been your baby for a while now. What's it like for it to be out and for people to see it over the next while? Is it emotional? Is it a sense of pride? Um, I think it's a bit of everything. I mean, there's always a sort of, it's weird with film because there's always a down bit, you know, the film was finished in January, late December, early January, and we, we shot it in Sundance. And it, it kind of went through festivals, but we didn't overexpose it. So, you know, you start thinking about other projects and you start thinking about things. But when it comes back now, I think the main pride is actually go to different countries and seeing the re reaction. We had the premiere in Rome last week. And we had two screening room of around four to 500 people. And we had a 10 minute standing ovation. And it wasn't the can standing ovation where you have the people in the room forcing you to applaud, to, 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 to clap. People were really, really touched by the film and the sense of family legacy. There was a lot of the themes in our film that really touched the people. And that's, that, that, that is really powerful. Yeah, that's wonderful. Were you surprised at the amount of footage that you've had? Like there was a lot of family footage that I was like, whoa, Jesus, there's lots going on here. Was that like a gift to you when you when you went to these guys and said, right, this is what we have? We, 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 I mean, yes, you're right, but we are unbelievably greedy. Um, <laughs> so there was never enough, um, you know, I, I, and that was despite the fact we had literally mountains of tapes in the kitchen, in our office, couldn't even get through to the fridge. Um, so we, we did have a tremendous amount, but, you know, you're always looking to make every sequence as brilliant as it possibly can be. And we have an incredible archive team who digitized this material, went through it, through it all, but also constantly sought to find new materials outside the family. And then, you know, we had a wonderful conversation with Marsha Williams, um, Robin's, Robin's kind of widow, I suppose, partner at the time of the, 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 the story. And uh, and Marsha was, was, was said, well, I think I might have some um, some archive. And we already knew we had piles of family archive. But the, uh, the thought of getting specific Robin Williams um, and Christopher Reeve archive together was just like, yes, please, Marsha, um, send us all of it. Um, so, so, yeah. It's not lovely that everyone now knows how great friends they were, because unless you were a fan of Superman or just say Robin, you wouldn't have known how close they were. What was that like for you guys having a front row seat looking at that archive go, geez, they really were proper friends. I think it's exactly what you just said. It's, it's just it, it was surprising. We, I mean, me personally, I really didn't know, and we find a lot of audiences just really get. That's a very surprising sort of aspect. The two people wouldn't you would not put them together as being best mate and and brother in arms. But you know, as um, Glenn Close says it, you know, Chris could match. They could match each other. And I think they could match each other because actually Chris was very funny. He had a very good, strong sense of humor. And But the thing is that they were very concerned about other people. And they were very, you know, in there's many things we actually don't know about Robin Williams. And he, he wasn't very sort of forward in saying how much he helped financially different um, charities and how, 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 you know, how involved he was with loads of, of things which, you know, we can't discuss here, but I think that's very much um, something they shared. They've really, they were rebuilding the world every time they saw each other. So they were joking about, but at the same time, they had those very deep intellectual conversation. And, you know, 
Robin didn't shy away from from Chris after the accident. He actually came and helped and just was present in their life. Will Reeve told us the other day that he meets a lot of people through his job. And some people are like, oh, my God, I knew your father. He was such a great friend. And he was like, I've never seen you in the house. I don't know you. I've never met you. So you're not really a great friend. You're an Hollywood friend. But Robin, Robin and some others, they were there. Suzanne came to visit. They were actually very present in their life. How interesting is it talking to the kids because they're properly talk? You know, when I saw the the trailer, I was like, "Oh, I wonder how much they're." This is them. This is their story. How how was that chatting to them every day about their dad? Was it raw sometimes? Yes, it was. I mean, particularly in the interviews. Mm. Uh, but I think it's it, important to emphasize that before, w when we were just beginning on the project, we spent quite a bit of time talking to them on Zoom eventually meeting meeting them all three of them together for the first time in New York and and hanging out there a bit and sort of like just really making sure that uh, that that they were on board for the film that we wanted to make um and there was a general consensus that we wouldn't sort of like try to to varnish chris we didn't want to put him on a pedestal we wanted to show him with his you know his fallibilities and his flaws and weaknesses and the kids were absolutely on board for that. And, and then when it came to the interviews, you know, there was a, they were, they really prepared themselves to, 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 to reveal things that they had never talked about before, not even necessary to each other, but, but they were determined that, that, that it would be, that they were going to authentically represent their feelings about their father um, and the family. Um, and not try and hide anything. And, and, and they were, you know, they were very raw, as you say, very raw, uh, honest interviews. Um, and everyone on set was was in tears at several points during them. Oh, I was uh, I was in bits, I think, by the end of it. I was like, I need a glass of wine or something. It's like, you really, lads, you've absolutely nailed this because it's just, it's incredible. It was like, what, one, one hour 40 in a cinema. And there's very little times you go to something, you come out and you go, oh, that was a slog. This was amazing. Like, this was proper. So well done. Um, thank you so much for today. And best of luck with it.